Hey, I'm Hannah Hamlin. I am a doctor with type 1 diabetes, and today I'm going to talk about Baxime, which is an emergency nasal glucagon, how it works, why we would want to use it, when we would want to use it, and how to use it. Now, this guy has been approved since 2019. It's FDA approved for children over four years old, so children and adults, and it works very effectively at increasing blood glucose levels during a severe flow. Now, what defines a severe low? The way that it's defined for the use of this product is for someone who is unable to swallow. So their blood sugar gets so low that they're no longer fully conscious and they can't swallow effectively in order to get something in their system to bring their blood sugar back up. How this works is it sprays a nasal glucagon powder into the nasal cavity where it can be absorbed quite well and it increases blood glucose. Now, it's a great option, I think, because there's no needles. And a big component of concern for glucagon, in my experience, personally talking with friends and family and talking with patients, is that a lot of people are scared of needles. They don't know how to use them, feel confident using them, or feel confident that they would understand how to do it in a rushed setting in an emergency. What's great about the Baxini is it's as easy to use as Flonase. It's pretty simple and easy to implement. I recommend Baxime if possible out of your choices just because there are more people in your life that could find it in your bag or your purse and use it if you needed to typically. So the way that it works is it has three milligrams of nasal powder and when you open this up you will see that it's got the classic kind of nasal spray look to it. What you do in order to use it is you put your thumb on the bottom of the plunger here and two fingers like this at the top you would insert it into the nasal cavity and you would press this plunger all the way to the bottom it's that simple now what's interesting is that it can't hurt a little bit especially if the person that you're using glucagon or vaccine on if it's yourself if it's someone else if you're using it and they're somewhat conscious it can burn a little bit Now, absolutely, that's not a deterrent to using it. However, a trick that can be helpful is if you have the person hold their breath. So you would insert this into their nose, breathe in, hold your breath, and then press it. If we're actively breathing in while we're pressing it, that's sometimes where it can cause irritation more. And so that's a trick that if you are using this often or if you have time to ask someone to hold their breath, that can be helpful, especially if there's hesitation. Now, what I love about Baxime is that it's pretty well studied, and we're confident that it works well. In trials, actually, 100% of people given Baxime during an emergency low had increased blood glucose levels within 30 minutes to greater than 70 milligrams per deciliter or an increase in 20 milligrams per deciliter from their lowest glucose level. 100%. In science, we don't get 100% from studies in medications very often. So to me, that gives me a lot of confidence in using this. I've seen it work very well for severe lows again and again in my experience. Now, one dose of Baxini is set to last 90 minutes. What I typically recommend for myself or if I was training a friend or family member on what to do for me, it would be to use the Baxini during the low. Understand that it kicks in with about seven to eight minutes. So that's when you'll start to see it working. It'll peak at about 30 minutes, but after using Baxime, after I'm back awake and conscious and fully there to eat a snack because it can wear off again after that kind of 30 minute mark and we can go low again. Often when we have severe lows, it may be because we have way too much insulin on board. Typically that's the reason. And so if we're unsure how that's going to continue to act in our system, that insulin could keep kicking in. And I really want to make sure that I've got more carbs coming in my system to prevent that from happening. Anytime there's an emergency low, I recommend calling 911. That is an important part of this so that you can have backup. It is typically best in my personal experience. If someone was going to treat me with Baxini for emergency low, I would want them to use the Baxini on me and then call 911 not the other way around, because the sooner I can get glucose into my body through the glucagon powder, the better I'm going to have as a result. And so that would be my personal preferred order. Again, this is not individual medical advice. This is not medical advice for you. That's just my experience as someone living with type 1 diabetes. These are pre-filled. 
but it is important to understand that they only give you one dose. So after using it, throw it away so you don't get confused that it has been used. You, we, we, you would never want to be in a situation where you have a low and you pick one that's already been used and it doesn't work. What's also great about the vaccine me is it's tiny. It fits in a fanny pack, in a pocket, in a purse pretty easily. There's no reason to not have it on you all the time. I keep mine in a little bag that I take when I walk my dogs with other low snacks, and it just gives me a sense of security. I will link in the resources the official vaccine me website, some patient information. Currently, the cash price in the United States through a coupon company called GoodRx is about $300. Now, that would be without insurance. Most insurance companies are covering this, in my experience, for people with type 1 diabetes. Some insurance companies are still covering Gvoke or other glucagon brands, but it's worth asking about if you're interested in it because I think that there's a lot of value to it over a traditional glucagon. I will put the recommendations, including links to a description of the study that I referenced, and if you have any further questions or stories about your experience with it, I would love for you to share that in the comments below because I think we grow by sharing stories. So an overview of today's video, if vaccine were to be used on me, I would want it to be used during a severe low only when I was not able to swallow specifically because of the low. I would want someone to use it immediately for me before calling 911 and call 911 immediately after in order to get that glucagon in my system quickly and I would want the people in my life to feel comfortable using it. If I was somewhat conscious, I would hold my breath during administration to prevent breathing in and causing that powder to burn more. And I would always throw it away after I was done so I didn't get confused. For me, I would want someone to use it on me and then call 911. And as soon as I was more conscious and able to swallow, I would follow it up with an additional low snack to make sure I was having more glucose coming in especially if I had a lot of insulin on board and didn't know exactly why that severe low happened, which usually you don't right in the moment. I would also want to have one on me. Most of the time, I like to carry it around with me in my purse, in the bag I walk my dogs in. I have it with me pretty frequently if I'm outside of the house. If I'm in the house, the people that I live with know where it is so that it's pretty easy for them to grab it if they need to. I find it is a really comforting tool in diabetes, and I think it's a great addition to the glucagon kind of market that we have. I am not at all paid to say this. I, I just, I'm really impressed with it as another option. If you are interested in more on diabetes and specifically the mindset part of living with diabetes, I've got something really cool coming out. It's an online course to help people work through diabetes fears, diabetes burnout, and negative diabetes mindset. And it's really designed to transition your ways of thinking around it so that you can feel more empowered and like the life that you live with diabetes. I think that is important. That was probably the hardest part of growing up with type 1 diabetes for me is trying to figure out how to think about it in a way that felt empowering. And so this course is designed to handhold you and walk you through the process of shifting your personal limiting beliefs and the things that cause a lot of fear. Often that's by filling gaps in knowledge or learning to see things differently. So if you'd be interested in something like that, I've got a wait list currently on my website. I will have the link for that at the top of the description so it's easy to find. And you can sign up so that I'll send you an email as soon as it's ready to go. And that way you'll have access or a reminder that it exists. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to like and subscribe to this video. It makes a big difference to me and helps other people to find this channel so that they can more easily access information about type 1 diabetes. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.